Hello, and welcome back to Math 301, Introduction to Combinatorial Theory. And today we're going to be talking about section 2.7, which is about Venn diagrams and the inclusion exclusion principle. And the idea with this principle is that we want to be able to count the number of things inside the union of sets, even when those sets uh, have some non trivial intersection. So we can't use the addition principle because the addition principle only works when we have sets that are disjoint from each other. I'm going to again work with Lego since it illuminates some of the main concepts that you're already probably familiar with. So I have one set of yellow Lego and it has size six. I'm gonna put it in this circle to represent my first set of size six. And I have a, another set. It has size five. And this set is all the things that are two by fours. Some of them are flat, some of them are not flat. And I'm gonna put those in this circle to represent that they're two by four. And then these two are in both of the sets because they are both yellow and two by four. And now I just wanna count the number of Lego. I mean, this is easy to do just by counting. There are uh, nine, nine pieces of Lego. But the way we wanna think about this now is that we're gonna take the size of the set of yellow pieces, which is six, add it together with the size of this set, which is five, but then we counted these yellow two by fours twice. We don't wanna over count them, so we need to subtract off the size of the intersection, which is two. So the total number here is six plus five minus two, which is nine pieces of Lego. Great, and now we're going to um, do the same thing, but with three sets. So we're gonna again put the Lego in this circle that's yellow. We're gonna again put the two by fours in this circle. And now I have just two more random pieces of Lego. And let's, uh, and this circle, this third circle is gonna represent things that are flat. So this one's not flat, so I'm gonna move it out. Um, this one's not flat, so I'm gonna move it out. And so we get this, this situation here. There are six yellow pieces. There are five that are two by fours. There are four that are flat. Now we wanna find all the number of pieces of Lego. Uh, this is not so hard to do, because we could just count them. They're, uh, 11, but um, here we're trying to learn the inclusion exclusion principle. So let's think what we need to do. We want to take the sum of all the yellow pieces, there's six of those, add all the two by fours, there are five of those, add the flat ones, there are four of those. So we add six plus five plus four. But then we've counted the two pieces in this intersection twice. So we're gonna take away two. And then we've counted these two flat pieces twice. So we're gonna take away those two. And we've also counted this piece, which is in the intersection of these two circles twice. So we're gonna take that away. So we're gonna have six plus five plus four, but then we're gonna subtract two, two, and one. But then this piece here, let's think about this. We first counted it three times because it's in all three of the big circles. But then we discounted it three times because it was in all three intersections of two circles. So we haven't counted it at all. So we need to add that one back in. So all together, we get six plus five plus four minus two, minus two, minus one, plus one. And that equals, that equals 11. 
Okay, so let's do that a little bit more formally now. By uh, looking at looking at this screen. So we're doing chapter two, section seven, Venn diagrams and the inclusion exclusion principle. And just to make this a little bit easier on this uh, page, I'm going to use the word cup to mean a union, which means we take the the amalgamation or the union of two sets, and we're going to use the word cap to mean intersection. So that means that we look at the elements that are in both sets. And theorem 2.7.3 says that A cup, the number of things in A cup B is the number of things in A plus the number of things in B minus the number of things in the intersection. And let's think about why this makes sense. So we draw the circle for A, the circle for B. And if we count all the things in this circle, that's the size of A. And then we count all the things in this circle, that's the size in B. But then we've counted the elements in the intersection twice, and so we need to remove that overcounting. So that's the first example of the inclusion exclusion principle. And it's pretty useful for solving some problems. So, for example, here's a problem um, How many numbers in the set of integers from one? to 60 have no factor in common with 6. So we can solve this kind of problem using the inclusion exclusion principle. The way we're going to do it, well, one way of doing it is to actually write down all the numbers and we kind of have to get rid of all the ones that are even because they share the factor two in common with six. Then we have to get rid of all the ones that are a multiple of three. And so that's, that's one way of doing it. But it's easier to use the inclusion exclusion principle. So here we're going to think about A being all the even numbers and b being all the multiples of three. And if we start putting numbers in these sets, here we have two and four, here we have three, here we have six, then we have eight, um, here we have nine, um, we get 12 here in the intersection, and we want to go all the way up from 1 to 60. So in this case, uh, the size of A is the number of even numbers from 1 to 60. So that's 30. The size of B is the number of multiples of 3 from 1 to 60. Every third number is a multiple of 3. So we have 20 things inside of, of the set B. So in this case, A intersect B is the set of multiples of six. And there are 10 of those between one and 30, one and 60. So we can find the size of A union B as being the size of A, which is 30, plus the size of B, which is 20, minus the size of the intersection, which is 10. And so we're left with 40 things in A union B. Those, those weren't the ones we wanted. We wanted the ones that were outside this set. The ones that are outside this set are the things like one 
and five and seven and um, 11. We wanted to count the things that were not in A and were not in B. And so what we need to do here is once we get a little more space, uh, is that we want the things in, if we call this set, if we call this set S, we want the things in S minus a union B. And by the subtraction principle, since A is a subset of S and since B is a subset of S, a union B is a subset of S. And so this, um, the number of things in here, this is the complement of A union B in S. This is going to be the size of S minus the size of A union B. So that's 60 minus 40, which is 20. So 20 is the answer to the problem of how many numbers in a set from 1 to 60 have no factor in common with 6. So there's a version of the inclusion-exclusion principle for three sets. And the idea here is that we have three, three circles. A, B, and C. And if we want to find the number of things inside the union of these three circles, we first can count the number of things in A, add to it the number of things in B, add to it the number of things in C. But then we've counted this subset twice and similarly, this subset twice, and this subset twice. So we need to remove the sizes of those intersections of two sets. And then this thing here, as I said before, we counted it three times because it's in A and B and C, but then we removed it two, three times, and so we need to add that back in again. So that's the inclusion-exclusion principle for three sets. So you can keep going with this and have an arbitrary number of sets. The problems for the inclusion-exclusion principle get to be very long because you need to be given the information of how many things are in each of these, each of these parts. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, seven different numbers to keep track of. So there's a lot of bookkeeping with problems about the inclusion-exclusion principle. I want to show you one more problem that's a pretty interesting one, and it's called the problem of derangements. This is a little bit of a harder problem. It's not, it's not in the book. Oops. Here. So here's an example of a derangement. We're going to um, ask how many rearrangements of the word mat have no letter in the correct place. Okay, so this is a very easy problem to answer because we can just write them down. Can't put the M first, but you could start with A. You can't put the T last, so the T has to go next. So ATM would be a good one. That's the only one that starts with A. You could also start with T. In that case, you couldn't put the A next, so you'd need TMA. 
So the answer here is that there are only two. There are only two. Now I want to show you the most complicated way of doing this problem. So we're going to let um, the set A be uh, permutations of mat with the M in the right place. B is the same but for A, for the letter A. And C is the same but for the letter T. Okay, so here we can actually write out all of these things. So to be in the set A, the M has to be in the right place. So it could be um, M uh, T A. That has the M in the right place. But notice that the T and the A are in the wrong places. And M A T is going to go here in the middle. because all three letters are in the right place. B has the letter A in the right place. It's a little bit poor notation because I'm using the letter A to stand for both the set A and for the letter A, but let's try to keep going. So here we need the letter A in the right place, but the M and the T are off. And in this set, we have the T in the right place, but the a and the M are off. Uh, now there should be, there's six permutations all together, so I seem to be uh, missing some. Oh, well, they're the ones that have, um, they're these two up here, ATM and TMA, which have no letter in the right place. So they're in the um, complement of these three sets. So I'll, I'll put them over here. So this is ATM and TMA. Okay, so remember this is the most complicated way of finding that there are two words that look like this is by using the inclusion exclusion principle for three sets. So the number of A union B union C is the number in A, it's just two, plus the number in B, which is two. It's the number in C, which is two. Then we're gonna subtract off the number in the intersection of A and B, and B and C, and A and C. And we have to subtract off one three times, and then we add one back in for this correct spelling here. So that's six minus three plus one, so that's four. And so the complement has size two. Okay, so why in the world would we want to do this to try to figure out how many ways there are to write mat with no letter in the right place? I mean, it was much, much easier to just figure out these two spellings here. But the reason is that this can work for words that have more letters. The idea being that if you're forcing the M to be in the right place, this number was easy to find because we had only two letters left over. The M is in the right place, so we have only the T and the A, and those can go in, in two orders, T, A, or A, T. So this number was easy to find. And the reason there are three of them was because there were three letters that could have been in the correct space. 
Uh, this number was also kind of easy to find because uh, once you have um, two letters in the right spot, then automatically the last letter has to be in the right spot too. So we're going to try to redo this now in a harder situation. This is maybe the one of the harder things um, that we've we've done in these videos here. But we're going to ask uh, this question: How many re rearrangements of math have no letter in the correct space? All right. Now this, I actually wrote all these options out. And maybe just to make things really clear, I'm going to write them out for you. But this took me a while. So you could do A M H T. You can do A T H M. You can do A H M T. You can do T M H A. T H A M. T H M A. H M A T. H T M A or H T H T A M. Okay, so those are the so the answer is only nine. Why do we say only nine? This is out of the twenty four, which is four factorial permutations of four letters. All right, and so let's let's try to do this using the inclusion exclusion principle. We're going to have to now have four sets. So we have A, now let, let's call it A1 is the set with the first letter in the right. Um, maybe I'll say the first letter being uh, M, because that's the first letter and it's in the right place. And A2 is the set with the second letter being A. A3 is the set with the third letter being T and A4 is the set with the fourth letter being H. And what we want to find is we want to find, um, we want to take 24, which is all the ways of permuting four letters, and we want to subtract the number which is in the union of the four sets. Let's just think why why that's true. If you have one letter or, or more letters being in the correct space, then you're in one of the sets A1, A2, A3, and A4. And we want to count the number of things that are in, that have no letter in the right space. So we want to take all the 24 options and get rid of all of the ones that have at least one letter in the right spot. Okay, so the good thing about, about this problem is that it's not so bad to count the size of A1. Because if you have the first letter being M, then you have three letters left and you could rearrange them however you want. So the size of A1 is three factorial, which is six. Uh, same for the size of A2. All of these, um, so maybe I'll just say that the, the size of, the size of a i is six. So here this number i 
can be one or two or three or four. What about the size of a one intersected with a two? So in that case, you're forcing the first letter to be M and the second letter to be A. There are not that many options left. You just have T and H and you could put them in the right order or the wrong order. So the size of A1 cap A2 is two. So I'll write that more generally is AI cap AJ. The size of AI cap AJ is, is two. Now we have to figure out how many sets like this there are. There are four sets A1, A2, A3, and A4. There are six sets um, that look like A1 intersected with A2 because among those four sets, if we choose any two of them, we'll get an intersection. All right, so finally, let's say we take A1 cap, A2 cap, A3. That means that we want the M in the right place, the A in the right place, and the T in the right place. Well, then the H is automatically in the right place also. So there's just one, one thing in that set. Okay, so... So for the intersection of three sets, it has size one. And this happens four times. There are four intersections like that. Maybe to make this a little more clear, I should say, um, instead of set six sets, I'll say six intersections like this. So for the intersection of three sets, that has size one, and this happens four times because you can leave off any one of the four sets. And then for the, for the intersection of four sets, that means you want each of the letters to be in the right place, and um, it has size one, and this happens uh, once. Okay, so um, we're gonna now do the inclusion exclusion principle on four sets, just in this example. We're gonna add six four times. Then we're going to take away Two, six times. Then we're going to add one four times. And then we're going to take away one once. And that, that is going to be the size of the union. Okay, so what is that? That's 24 minus 12, that's 12, plus four is 16, minus one is 15. Okay, so the union has size 15, and so what do we get there? Our answer was supposed to be 24 minus the size of the union. So that's 24 minus 15, and that's 9. Uh, yay! So it's always wonderful when you're doing a really long and hard problem to get the same answer um, in 
two different ways. And so here we, we got these two different ways because we took the rearrangements of math, which have no letter in the correct space. We wrote them all out. There were nine of them. But then we also did this with the inclusion X principle for four sets and found that the answer was 24 minus 15, which is nine. So that's it for the inclusion exclusion principle. And uh, we'll come back and do some more with chapter two in a bit.